Hi everyone, Alexandra Brommen from Venta Belgaram Associates with you today. Today I'm talking plans. So are you a planner or are you a fly by the seat of your pants type of person? See me, I'm a planner. I like to know where I'm going, where, when I'm going to go there, how I'm going to get there, roughly what time I need to leave to get there, roughly what time I think I'm going to arrive there, what I need to be taking with me, um, everything. It gives me some comfort. I live and die by my calendar and a routine and it just makes me feel comfortable and like I'm in control of the situation. I have three children and I need to be able to remember oodles of stuff every time I leave the house. But my brother on the other hand, who also I might just say is married with three children, is one of those people who is able to land in a foreign city who he's never been where he's never been before and with two nights in a hotel booked and he's able to have a completely relaxed holiday and just fly by the seat of his pants figuring it out as he goes along that's what he enjoys now just the mere thought of it makes me feel sick because it's so far removed from anything that i think is relaxing it just isn't true see i like to have it so planned out that i don't have to think about it anymore <laughs> so i get to relax now, how do you run your business? Are you a planner or are you a fly by the seat of your pants type of person? And you may be wondering how this fits into running a business, but it actually is really fundamental. So if you're a planner, you're going to have the kind of business where you have a five year plan, you have your business plan in place, you have a strategic plan in place, you probably have a marketing plan in place, you have a financial analysis done, you have all of these little bits and pieces sorted. You know how many staff you need, you know what tech you need, you know what you need to be doing, you know, at the end of next week, you know, how many leads you need each month to be able to come in the door and how, you know, what financial goals you're achieving and setting and, and winning. You tend to be kicking goals. You tend to be getting to where you need to be. Your process and processes and procedures are nice and tight and working and ticking along and everything is functioning as it should be, or at least that's, you know, you might be part of the way towards having that all working. If you haven't got any kind of plan in place, then what you tend to find is those businesses are a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more fly by the seat of your pants type thing. And for those businesses, success might be somewhat harder for, to achieve because they don't really have any idea of how much of a headcount they need in terms of staff. And you tend to find that they're either woefully understaffed or woefully overstaffed. It, it never really sits too much on the spot, the spot right on sort of number. You'll find that they have no idea who their competitors are, how much they're charging or how they um, are advertising. They don't know what tech stack they need. They might have way too many subscriptions or not enough subscriptions or they're just, you know, they're spending money on things they're not using. Their systems and processes, if they have them, they're probably not followed or they're not particularly tight. So they're not functioning well enough in the business that they as they run it day to day. There, there's a myriad of things that goes on. And what I will say here is that the number of business owners who say to me, it's in my head, it's okay, it's all good. A plan is not a plan until you write it down. As long as it's in your head, it's an idea. And ideas are chaotic because they can change, they can morph, they can be amended, they can be different easily just because today you feel like doing it this way and tomorrow you feel like doing it a different way. So it's not a plan until you write it down. And once you have a plan written down, you can share it with your team and then they know where they're going. And suddenly that's why your goals are easier to achieve is because everybody is working towards the same thing and everybody's helping you to get to the same place. So there are many different types of plans that you can have in a business, but the one that specifically I'm talking about today, as you may have guessed by now, is a business plan. Now you can set a business plan up when you set your business up, or you can set it up later on down the track. There's no finite time period in which you have to have it done. But the sooner you get it done, the better. It's also not a document that you write and then forget about. It's the kind of document that you write and then you revisit and you revisit periodically, especially if it's got your five year strategic plan in it, because obviously it's a rolling five years. You go back and you change it and you amend it and you might change and your goals might change and, you know, things change along the way. So it is changed. So what does the business plan need to include? Well, you're going to be having a description of your business. You're going to be having a description of your competitors' businesses. You're going to be having a description of your ideal client and where you're going to find those clients, how much you're going to charge those clients. 
how many leads each month you need to get to the revenue number that you've also planned to have because you have a financial plan in there you have a marketing plan in there about how you're going to get those leads you have a description around the registrations and licenses that you may need to run your business um, for example in Venta being an accounting practice we actually have to hold for example the chartered accountants public practice certificate so we have to have that we also have to have a membership to the tax practitioner board we also have to have a membership you know licensing and um, uh, communications with the ATO. We have to have all sorts of different things, but you may also have some peripheral ones. For example, for us, it's the NTAA, the National Tax Accounting Association, because that's a peripheral one. They provide a lot of useful help and guidance to uh, firms around um, the knowledge piece and training and, and such like. So you have all of that sitting in your business plan, plus anything else. You have a risk analysis. You know, how easy is it going to be to achieve your goals? Um, what are the kind of things you know that, that are the threats to the business? You, you may have thought of all the different threats. Well, what are you going to do to mitigate those threats? How serious are they? The more detail you put into it, the better the document becomes. Now, you would normally also have two types of plan in there. So you're going to have your 12 month detail plan and your five year strategic plan. And you generally do your five year strategic plan first. And then the 12 month one is a step or a rung on the ladder on the way to get to your five year plan. And you'd have all of that in your document. Then you revisit it periodically. So for example, inventor, I, when I set the business up being a good accountant, I ticked the box and I wrote a business plan except that then I didn't even look at it for a good five years. And the reason for that was I was so focused on setting the business up and winning leads and moving on to the next thing that I actually completely even forgot that it was there. I didn't even bother to look at it. And then when we were coming, you know, just in that period before COVID and I was beginning to sort of sit back and go, okay, I haven't really quite got to where I thought I'd get to when I started out. I kind of went digging for it and went to look at it and go, okay, where did I think I was going to be and where am I in terms of that? And then of course, COVID hit us and we had our big cash flow problem that I was talking to you about a couple of weeks ago. And I sat down and I really looked at our five year plan and went, right, what do we need to change? What are my actual goals now? You know, I'm older, I'm wiser, I, I'm, you know, what are my goals now? And we sat down and I had a good thorough look at it. And so now what we do is every May, June sort of time, I go back and I revisit the business plan. I look at our five year strategic plan and I say, okay, how are we on our way to do that? What does our 12 month goal need to be or goals need to be to get towards that five year strategic plan? Then each quarter, when I do the BAS, I go back and I have a look at the business plan and I see how we're tracking for the business plan against our 12 month goals and then that will feed into our five year strategic plan. And that's how you keep on track and your systems and processes on track. Because what it's also done is it said, I, you know, I looked at it and went, okay, well, this type of work we don't really want to be doing, but we seem to be doing a lot of it. So we will stop taking on that kind of work and we'll focus on where we want to be going. And that then was able to drive systems and processes to make sure it happened. In terms of our marketing, we were able to say, okay, well, these are the types of leads that we want and this is what we're going to do to go and get them. And we were able to actually shift ourselves away from just flying by the seat of our pants, which is what we had been doing, totally uncharacteristic for me, and to something more functional and more focused and something that actually is working towards achieving the goals that I want to achieve for the business. Okay, so that's really all there is to it to a business plan. Now, who needs to prepare the business plan? Well, <laughs> honestly, I've heard it all. <laughs> okay, so you can prepare the plan yourself. All right, you don't need to employ a specialist to do it for you. But here's the, here's the thing. I have had quite literally hundreds of clients say to me over the years that they will prepare the plan themselves. And when I follow up with them and say, how's the plan coming along? Can I have a look at it just to, you know, get an idea of what you want? Because, you know, as a good accountant, I need to understand what my clients want as well. They say to me, oh, yeah, I haven't really got around to it. Oh, I've been so busy. I've been this, I've been that. There's so many excuses as to why they haven't actually looked at this business plan. So yes, you can absolutely do it yourself. It is easy to do. And at the end of the day, nobody, but nobody knows your business the way that you know your business. So in terms of writing the business plan, absolutely go for it. But here's the thing. Will you? Because if you haven't got the time to do it now, then you're never going to have the time to do it. And if you want to start achieving your goals, then you need 
to actually sit down and do this plan. So you can do it yourself or you can employ someone like myself to do it, a business consultant, an accountant, someone who can come in and do it for you. But as I said before, nobody knows the business like you know your business. So whoever that consultant is that comes in to do the work with you, they very much need to do the work with you. They need to sit down and make sure they truly understand what your business does, where your business is going and who you believe your competitors are. Because I could pick a whole stack of competitors out of thin air and get it completely wrong. And then the plan is absolutely meaningless. Okay, But done well and done right, this document will serve you very, very well. You can take it to your financiers, you can take it to lenders, you can take it for your seed capital, you can do everything with it. And you'll be viewed that much better because you've gone to the trouble to actually get a professional document in place outlining how your business is going to run, where it's going to go, identifying the negatives as well as the positives because that gives a balanced approach. It's a very, very, very useful document to have in your arsenal and have in the cupboard that you actually check, <laughs> that you actually go back to. There's no point in having it if you're just gonna shove it in a drawer and forget about it. Well, I would love to sit down and help you all write your business plans, but at the end of the day, you can do it yourself if you want to. But if you do want to sit and have a chat with me, feel free to, to contact me, send a message, click on the link below or click on the comments box below and send a message, which I shall see and respond to. Or just give me a call at the office and we'll sit down and have a chat and we can go from there. You have a lovely day. Bye.